guys welcome back to another video today with ARC Exotics and in this video we're going to be running through our bioactive setup for our day geckos um, well day gecko at the minute as you know we've had to split them we've only done one of the tanks just to see how it goes um, the pros and cons and what to do better next time which we've already learned from doing the crested gecko one as well which will be shown a little bit later on in another video so basically what we've done is strip the whole tank and that included the day, the day gecko escaping and running up the side of the wall, which we somehow got. Um, and this is a line day gecko for those that don't know, and they're very quick. Um, so we got lucky there. But yeah, everything started from scratch again. Built it up with all the layers and the live plants and the light. Loads of stuff like that. So basically I'm going to be doing a voiceover of us setting it up and see what you guys think of it. Thank you for watching the video and I hope you enjoy this one. So guys, this is all of the stuff we have got, like the Bio Life Bio Balls, the Arcadia Earth Mix, because you guys know I absolutely love it, Hydro Fleece, um, again, you get a few runs out of that, Live Moss, um, some, that says cockroaches on there, but they're actually earthworms from Live Food Hub, some Fish Mix from Biobiz, Float and Shelf, Bio Drain, and the Bio Revitalizer from Arcadia, the first time I'll be using that and two packets of springtails so and obviously we can't forget the main thing of this whole build the arcadia jungle dawn 15 watt led bar and a bunch of live plants which we've just picked up um and there's quite a few there we've got a decent amount so other than that we're basically just going to be running you through all of this getting set up step by step and taking you guys through the process of it on this tank here so firstly we're going to start with the jungle dawn 15 watt led bar from arcadia this is the smallest of the new range that you can get which is a 15 watt and this will suit perfectly for the tank you can see here which is a 30 by 30 exo terra um, so basically same as the other kits from arcadia unbox it they keep it clear they keep it straightforward and that's why we like them um, instruction manual there for pros and cons of the light and reading all into it a housing kit or a bracket for the inside of it an adapter so you can link up more than one unit like for example there with rolo's uvb and obviously a main power source now this is the actual light build itself it feels really durable and quite hefty for an led bar which is good as you can see here all of them little led strips so at the minute this is the tank we've got and you basically couldn't get much more fake when it comes to terms of plants and life and stuff like that um, there's not much in here to do with that so we're going to strip all of that out to the bare minimum now at this point in time the day gecko is still in here but he did escape through that little slit and up the wall but we've managed to get him back somehow so basically what we're going to be doing is clearing out all of the items from the tank the day gecko is now secured in a tub and then another tub just in case and we're going to empty it right out like this now once it's all like this really ideally we'd want to hoover it out just to get all the little bits like so and it's nice and clean and fresh also it's worth hoovering the background i've got a custom made background that i've done myself which is a moss frog carpet from exoterra so once it's all hoovered out and all clean you want to work on getting the stuff off the side like the little cave i had this was an absolute nightmare to get off I put it on with no more nails and I regretted it massively. So firstly, we're going to start with the Bio Life, which are basically the Bio Balls. Um, and I haven't used this brand before when it comes to Bio Balls, but they look pretty decent. Again, they're pretty straightforward. They are what they are. They do what they're meant to do. As you can see, they do need a wash because it's quite dirty. I washed them in the bag, which I found was easier, and then drained the bag. So now just pour a few in. And again, it's all personal preference and dependent on the tank you've got yourself. But you want to make sure you've got a decent level of bioballs because if not, then the bioactive setup won't really work because the drainage layer won't exist, if that makes sense. So after you put a few in, like now, that wasn't enough for me, so I wanted to add a few more. So as you can see, we added a few more to get it to the level we wanted it. And then again, personal preference, once you're happy with it, I think it's got to be a decent amount at least. But remember, you do need room for deep substrate, which coming up to later in the video, I feel like I maybe put too many bioballs in and didn't have enough substrate. Now, with the hydro fleece, again, for the 30 by 30, 
you can get a few cut into this. I've pre-cut mine and I think I had managed to get three squares worth out of one and I had a few off cuts as well. So this is a pre-cut one that I've done earlier. Fits in pretty perfectly. Now what I found after the build is that this foam wasn't straight when looking at the tank from a distance. So make sure that when you put this layer in, it is straight and level and make sure the bio balls are straight and level as well. Now this bio drain I cut up and used as a mesh for the mantis tank which I no longer needed. But I chucked it in there anyhow because why not? It will do some sort of good from having another bit of drainage layer in the centre where the main plant is going to be. So now we're using my favourite, as you guys know, the Arcadia Earth Mix. Um, again, you want to sort of put it on accordingly. You don't want to dump loads in, but you want to make sure you have enough. Now, this is where I said earlier about adding too many bioballs and not enough um, substrate. Now, I found that I'd done that, but I'd done the substrate right up to the doors. So I got the maximum depth in the substrate what I possibly could get. Now you want to make sure that is the case, unlike Rolo's tank next door to this, which is a 30 by 30 by 60 having a deeper base would be much more helpful. But again, that is why I'm doing this video and you can learn from this mistake. I still think that the substrate is deep enough for the plants and they can still root through into the drainage layer, so it shouldn't be a problem. But again, we'll discuss this in later videos by assessing how the plants have got on during the growing stage. Now what I've done is just packed it into the corners to make sure that none of the dirt later falls through the bio layer. And as you can see here, I didn't notice it at the time, but the bio uh, carpet mesh, whatever it is, that is not straight. And I thought, oh my god, it's too late. I'm just going to have to leave it. So what I've done is I've built the bio balls with a decent layer, but again, not straight. And I've done the earth right up to the top. Now this is the first time using Arcadia's Bio Revitalizer, which if you want to pause it here and just have a look at basically what it does, it basically acts as a nutrient for all your live plants. So I read that and according to the tank size, it's about four handfuls. You want to chuck that in and scatter it throughout the substrate. Now I don't know why you would, but in case you were wondering what it looks like, that is that. So basically it's like a sort of gravelly, stony texture. And instead of doing the substrate and flattening it down, I really should have done this first. But again, my first bioactive build, you've got to bear with me. I'm learning just as well as you guys. So what I'm doing is adding the correct amount of handfuls they told me to. And then mixing accordingly just throughout all of the substrate. Obviously making sure it's not just on the top as well. And it's actually underneath and dug a bit deeper in. So when the roots are there, that will help support them. So basically all you want to do is keep doing that until you can sort of see little parts of them but not big parts like you can here. Now, getting into the plants, I had a massive help again from JTP Reptile. Um, he basically ID'd all these plants for me. When it comes to plants, I'm not very good. In fact, I'm rubbish. I don't really know any plants at all. So what I'm going to do is just list them out here and show you here. And if you know them, then you know them. I'm pretty sure this is an umbrella plant, so go me for knowing that but I will try and do some sort of list on the side here and list all of them what they are um, but I might not be able to do that but we'll have to see so basically we got a whole little bundle from our local pet shop and these are everything that's going to be going in the tank today so what we're going to start off doing is getting a tub of fresh water and basically unpotting them taking them out of the pots and giving them a wash to make sure that there's no things in there that we don't want like foreign objects i.e snails bugs anything like that or just any bits of again foreign objects which shouldn't be in there which have maybe got caught up in the pet shop in there or put in there by mistake so you just want to get most of the soil off and try and find the roots but be really gentle because as you can see here they're all attached and you don't want to ruin these um, it's not the end of the world if you do but again why make your plant struggle if it doesn't need to so this is a delicate process and you need to take your time doing this um, it's not to be rushed because again you will make mistakes but slowly do that and once that is done put it in the tub like you can see next to me clear water and then it's ready to plant so this has all been washed over and hopefully there's a good enough job where nothing is done um, nothing is on it so then it's just positioning the plants you want to make sure they're in decent parts of the tank to get the light they need uh, most of these are apparently quite straightforward but again 
we will tell by how the tank looks in a few weeks time so this one's going in the far left back corner and this is actually going to be directly above the light so again this led bar will cover all of my tank but obviously there will be plants having a different effect from directly under it and under it but to the side of it you'll see this in later videos so now this is planted and I've added some logs or some wood. What I've done is added the tall one at the back here, which again, the day gecko will like to go on quite a lot. This little one I'm adding through the whole cork method, which I've seen loads on bioactive builds, where you fill the cork bark with dirt and plant it in the top to make it higher. A lot of people do this on the back of their tanks, but I thought I'd have it in the middle and connect them to the wood, just something a little bit different. And again, make sure you fill the log so that when the plant's ready to grow, it can grow downwards into that. Again, this little one, they all need to be broken apart and separated and make sure this is done properly. And again, like I said, take your time on it. Now, as I said before, I don't really know nothing about plants, but this year I want to turn all of my tanks to bioactive setups. Well, all of them that are possible to go to them. And I really want to sort of dive into this and learn as much as I can about it where I just look at a plant and I can know the name of it. Uh, this is something that this year, like I say, I want to focus on. My collection, I'm happy with. There's nothing I desperately want or need to add to my collection at the minute. So I think it's now time to focus on the tanks, providing the best setup and the best care that we possibly can. And again, just widen my, my knowledge with the whole reptile keeping which is now a lot days of live plants because a lot of people do have live plants over plastic now when i used to start doing reptile stuff a few years ago when i was a kid or a teenager this was never really a thing it was always plastic plants was the way forward so back to the video going a little bit off track as you can see everything is planted and everything is in now at first i wasn't very happy with it i thought it looked a bit messy but other people disagreed whether they were just saying that to please me or not. You guys let me know what you think of it. You'll see a better clip of it later on. So now we've got our cleanup crew, which are the springtails and the isopods. Um, and we've got some earthworms as well, which we got from the live food hub. Uh, they are in there somewhere, but don't worry. And we've also got the fish mix, which again, if you want to read, this is here. Um, if you guys are interested in adding this to your bioactive setups, then let me know and I can tell you where to get this stuff. Um, I actually got it as a free sample from my local pet shop, but again, it is widely available if you need it. Now, these are the earthworms from the live food hub. Um, and as you can see here, I was not eating one, I was just messing about. But they can go into the substrate and they will constantly continue to turn over your substrate, keeping it fresh and all of the muck, you can say, from the animal um, will get turned over underground into the isopods, the springtails, stuff like that. So the earthworms just basically keep the substrate always moving like you can see there, always turned over, keeping it fresh for both the plants and the day gecko itself. So here we have the live moss. Um, again, there is more than enough to do this tank and I have got a lot left over, but this is sort of stuff that is always used when it comes to bioactive setups and it will just go around the plant, sort of connecting to another plant so you don't see too much of the substrate. Now again, this is the first time I've properly used it. I've normally just chucked it in tanks where they've not had correct lighting and it's just died. But hopefully this will do quite well and again it will be much more humid for it so it should thrive in an environment like this. So what we're doing is just bedding it around the plants and trying to tuck it in so it looks kind of neat in there, not just um, chucked about. As you can see there, you can sort of the first thing you see when you see that is the moss now and that will go around all of the plants. Sorry about the camera person here, um, not my fault. But like I say, you can just push it in the corners where they perhaps look a little bit boring or a little bit dark, not much colour, and make them a bit more colourful, something a bit more to look at. Again, the isopods will have had an escapee worm. The isopods will go in there as well. Uh, same with the springtails, stuff like that. It will hold life quite well. Little critters, things like that. So you just want to sort of bed it in, like I say, push it around and make sure it doesn't look neat as such, but, you know, it just looks natural if you can. So this is without the jungle dawn light on, but I've given it a big spray down and setting the plants in. 
So as you can see, we've got a different array of plants. Again, I said about the names, I will try and be better at this, but I am learning as well. Hopefully there was a list somewhere in this video where you can see them. And I was pretty impressed with this. And then it goes to this. This is with the jungle dawn over the top of the tank. Now I was quite surprised by this. I was happy with how it looked before the jungle dawn. And then I added it and the green from the plants just come out absolutely like incredibly more greener. Like it sounds silly, but like now like that colour contrast there is pretty amazing. Um like I say I was happy with the standard one, but looking at that with this jungle dawn on here, I was I was basically blown away. So as you can see, Candy, the female lined day gecko, is now in. And she seems pretty happy, she's chilling, considering she was going up the side of my bedroom wall about half an hour ago, she's doing okay. And I was really scared that this setup build would ruin her personality, because obviously I had to capture her and put her in a tub. Now with Kane, the other day gecko, that really scared him, but as you can see here, she is absolutely fine. She's still not scared of people. I don't think it's possible for her to be scared of people. She's just so, so confident. And again, she was in here for about 10 minutes and she's straight up to the glass, seeing what we're up to, looking around. She knows it's a new setup and she's really, really interested. Now, her personality was great and that is why I wanted to do the build on her first because I knew she'd appreciate it the most. But doing this, I didn't want to then scare her into not coming out and not being seen. But as you can see, she's exploring all areas of the tank, getting up as high as she can. And again, these leaves are very, very light and very, 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 and very, very thin. But it doesn't bother her. She can still stand on them nicely without them bending over or her falling off. And under this light, she looks even better and even greener. And a day after this video, she actually does shed as well. So I haven't got any clips of that, but after the shed she looked absolutely incredible as good as she looks now imagine that but 10 times better so i was very very impressed with her and i was very very impressed with the setup overall so now i'm going to stop saying very very and let you guys watch some of the clips of her Now, I hope you guys like that video. As you can see from the previous clip, she does really, really enjoy the tank. Um, she enjoys climbing on the leaves, falling off the leaves, which I've seen a lot of, and everything like that. Uh, now, the day after this video, she actually shed, which tells me she's comfortable, she's happy. She's still doing her natural things that she should do, which is great. And as you can see, it is that tank there. Now, compared to the other tank, like that one, Rolos, and the one here, you can see how bright it looks. You can see how in your face it is. Now, this is actually from the Arcadia Jungle Dawn light. And like I said in the previous clips, with the color of the standard UVB light and Baskin bulb, I thought, oh, it looks quite nice. I was happy with it. But when I turn on the Jungle Dawn, 
the colours from the plants just like I say it's, it's, it sounds weird because they're just plants but undescribable really really vibrant now I know a lot of people so not skin pal but use other lights and I feel like that's something perhaps you wouldn't get with other standard lights that you just you know it's just the colour like I say you have to see it for yourself now I'm overall really happy with this tank it was my first attempt at a proper bioactive build with plants um so I'm happy with that now I just want to see how it goes and the sort of growth of the plants, the rate of the growth, stuff like that. I want to observe it and make sure I'm happy with it and happy with the actual setup itself. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to do Rolo's tank, which is the one next to it there, which is a Crested Gecko. Um, and obviously having the two side by side looking really bright and with live plants will look really good. Like I say, this year I mainly want to focus on not getting animals, but the care for them making them the most naturalist, realistic environments that they can possibly have. And that is what I'm going to start to do. I didn't want to jump straight in and get Rolo live plants if they were all going to die. Not because the arcade light is no good, but because me planting them in not enough substrate might kill them, which I'm still not sure about. So we'll have to see. But once that is all OK and I'm happy with that, Rolo's tank will be the next one to do. Now, I've just filmed a video doing his substrate which will eventually be added on to Rolo's bioactive tank video, which isn't out yet because I haven't done it yet. But his substrate is up to the level it needs to be with the bioballs in. So all we need to do is add a light and add some plants and he is ready to go. But other than that, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. If there is any questions you have about the tank or the build, let me know and I'll try and help you. Also, is there anything that you could help me with? Anything you think I could have done better? to anything of any, you know, any any little thing to big thing let me know because again i'm still learning as well as you guys but other than that this has been arc exotics thank you for watching the video and stay tuned for another one next week